Leobardo Jimenez. Says, Can you help me understand search incident to citations? <laughs> when can we and can we not search people when we cite them for misdemeanor crimes? Zach, do you want to do you want to open yeah. that up, man? And it, it is quite the can of worms. I would agree. This is this is a tough one. And I and and I've I done some research on it. And I really haven't found a whole lot of case law to support one way or the other. Maybe Anthony has something, but you know. Um, so we have Knowles versus Iowa, uh, which is kind of our guidepost here, where the Supreme Court says the 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 authority to do a search incident to arrest that automatic authority that comes with with every lawful custodial arrest does not extend to cite and release situations. So for citing in a field and releasing someone, uh, we don't get that automatic right to search them for weapons or evidence, um, relate, well, evidence in general, but destructible evidence. But Knowles also doesn't say you could never do a search incident to citation. It just says they won't extend the bright line rule. So, um, well, one, if we think they have a weapon on them, that's easy, you can just pat them down under Terry. Uh, because we, I'm, I'm assuming we have a lawful detention if we're if we're writing citations to people, um, so we do have the, rec the the Terry requirements. But as far as searching them for evidence, um, I've kind of gone back and forth on this one, and I'm uh, right now I'm of the position that if if you have a reason to believe this person has evidence on their person relevant to whatever it is you're citing them for. I think there is some potential support for the, for that that limited search for that limited purpose. Like if I believe they've got stolen merchandise, it's shoplifting is where this comes up frequently. Maybe they stole allegedly a, a DVD. If if those are even if these if those are even a thing anymore, I don't know. But you know, you know, that's a rather large item. I think you could you could conduct a limited search of that person and perhaps any carried belongings they have accessible to them, uh, looking for that that item. But um, okay, I, I, yeah, Anthony. Okay, look, I, I absolutely. So I, I want to maybe uh, add a few pointers here. Number one is, I think part of the problem that cops get confused on is that there is this old old adage that a citation is in lieu of arrest. You, we've all heard that. It's a, it's, it, it really does not move the ball forward because what does that even mean, right? Um, and some courts have used that language, you know, citation in lieu of arrest. And then some of our officers who are not legally trained, they think, well, since it's an arrest, I get a search instance arrest. I think that's one problem. The second thing is, is that it's really not search instance of citation is because Knowles obviously handled that. It's exigency searches. And that's what you're talking about with the with the shoplifting case. Right, Zach? It's, um, it's what, I, I'm, I think there's I'm distinguishing between the two, but I think that's a very viable alternate argument. The exigent circumstances. Well, what would be if, if it was an exigency and you're not going to make the arrest? Right. Right. And it, you, they, they will not give you the consent. Well, then what would you say to the court about what is the recognized exception then? The, for evidence? the, the search, uh, it's, well, it's effectively a search incident to arrest without an arrest is, is the exception that I, I think there's, there's an argument for. Um, without getting into, there, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Go. No, well, I'll say without getting into Rawlings issues, uh, you know, the search that precedes the, the arrest, the search yeah. that precedes the arrest, Right, uh, right. That's an all, all another way to go. I think there's some language in in Robinson, Chamel, and even Gantt that I think, uh, uh, and in Knowles as well, that a limited search for evidence related to the offense of the citation could be lawful. Yeah. Well, look, I think that the the vast majority because I've done this is the million dollar question. This is the this is the one the one area of the law right that quite frankly, if, if the Supreme Court asked me. Hey, what do you want us to clear up? This would absolutely be it, right? This whole I would agree. Can yep. We yep. It, it, it comes up all the time. And now the thing is, you know, with my research, and I've been trying to figure out this for, for years, quite frankly, is it I think most courts are going back ultimately to what case? Uh was it uh Murphy versus Cup? Do I have that right? Is it Cup versus Murphy? But Cup um, versus they go back. Cup versus Murphy. They go back to that case, which is for our listeners. It is that case where the husband was interviewed about his 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 wife's death. They did notice that he had, you know, blood, you know, and maybe some fibers under his fingernails. They basically held his hand down. They recovered those fibers. Ultimately, it was forensically, you know, um, linked to the wife, and they did not arrest him. And the court obviously upheld it as reasonable. But why did they uphold it? You know, for exigency purposes, destruction of evidence. 
let's fast forward to 2024. You know, if you got this person who's shoplifted, right, and they have whatever they have in their backpack, and you're in most states, not most, I, but many states cannot even make that arrest because it's a misdemeanor mm -hmm. and so forth. Yeah, you can maybe do a citizen's arrest, but even then it's limited. So what are you going to do? And, and let's say the LP, the loss prevention, has not recovered their uh, their items. Yes, we, we are going to – we can help I, – I believe we can help recover that, that stolen property. It, but if it's limited, just like you said – and there should be the cops should have something to say about why it's there is agency, I, because that's what, in my view, that's what these courts want to hear. And it's as simple as, look, your honor, if I don't grab this evidence now, I'm sorry, this stolen property now, you'll never see it again. And what's the alternative to arrest them, which you, you, that's more intrusive. Right. Or hold mm -hmm. them for a search warrant, which is going to take seven hours in some places. So I just think that I, I found a case um, out of the Ninth Circuit that talked about the fact that they are going to be let go is the agency. Yeah. And I'll tell you, Anthony, there is uh, there's Colorado case law on this that says, you know, if the, if it's, if the search is limited intrusiveness, if it's made under arrest, like circumstances, basically the arrestee knows what is happening and why there's California yeah. case law on this. And then there's one out of Idaho or Iowa. I don't remember. I apologize, but it, it actually lays out very nice factors for it. And the Colorado case right. ones are interesting because it says, there, it's actually like statutorily prohibited to make an arrest under circumstances like this. And so what are officers supposed to do? They're statutorily prohibited from making a custodial arrest. So they right. can incident to criminal citation. That's right. Now, actually, I will tell you this. Number one is, you know, you talked about de facto arrest. Try holding a person on the side of the road or at Walmart loss prevention office for three hours while a warrant is that that's a de facto. Right. arrest. So in effect, you're, you've mm -hmm. arrested them anyway. But I will tell you that out of all these cases, Colorado is the most clear to me. They're the ones their Supreme Court is actually saying and, and they, they, you know, they call it a search. Um, they search incident to a non-custodial arrest. Right. Um, these other ones are more or less doing the balancing test based on the Fourth Amendment's re ultimate reasonableness. Right. And I think that's really important for us to think about. It's like if you think about, hey, I'm just going to go into your backpack, recover the stolen property and kick you loose versus arresting you, keeping you. What's more reasonable to that person? Um, so, so I know that I, I know that the court will uphold it, but I'm telling you, man, even prosecutors are like, I don't know how you're going to do it. I don't know how we recover it, you know, without that arrest. And I'm like, okay, well then you argue to the judge that the alternative is just to make this arrest. Then that's, you have to arrest these people every single time, you know, if they don't let you into the backpack, which you may not be able to do. Right. Anyway. Yep. Yeah.